about anything. You know that I like to draw lines, especially red ones. Today is the line between life and death, between right and wrong, between the blessings of a brilliant future and the curses of a dark past. The combination of uh, Israeli innovation and Gulf entrepreneurship, to take one example, I think this combination could catapult the entire region forward. I believe that together we can resolve, actually solve the region's water and energy problems. You know, Israel has half the rainfall we had 65 years ago. We have 10 times the population. Our GDP has shot up, thank God. Of innovation, of system. We could make that available to our Arab neighbors throughout the region that is not exactly blessed with water. We could solve the water problem. We could solve the energy problem. We could improve agriculture. We could improve education with e-learning, health, with diagnostics on the internet. All of that is possible. We could better the lives of hundreds of millions. So we all have so much to gain from peace. That's why I want to thank the indomitable John Kerry. You know, New York and Tel Aviv, they're the cities that never sleep. John Kerry is definitely the Secretary of State who never sleeps. And um, and I've got the bags under my eyes to prove it. We're working together, literally, day and night, to seek a durable peace, a peace and to prove it. We're working together, literally, day and night, to seek a durable peace, a peace anchored in solid security arrangements and the mutual recognition of two nation states. Israel. Israel is the nation state of the Jewish people, where the civil rights of all citizens, Jews and non-Jews alike, are guaranteed. The land of Israel is the place where the identity of the Jewish people was forged. It was in Hebron that Abraham bought the cave of the patriarchs and the matriarchs. It was in Bethel that Jacob dreamed his dreams. It was in Jerusalem that David ruled his kingdom. We never forget that. In the past year, Iran's radical regime has tried to blur this moral divide. It wheels out its uh, smiling president and its smooth-talking foreign minister. But if you listen to their, their words, their soothing words, they don't square with Iran's aggressive actions. Iran says, it only wants a peaceful nuclear program. So why is it building a heavy water reactor, which has no purpose in a peaceful nuclear program? Iran says it has nothing to hide. So why does it ban inspectors from its secret military sites? Why doesn't it divulge its military nuclear secret, uh, mil the secrets of its military nuclear activities? They absolutely refuse to say a word about that. Iran says it's not building nuclear weapons. So why does it continue to build ICBMs, intercontinental ballistic missiles, whose only purpose is to carry nuclear warheads? See, unlike Scud missiles that are limited to a range of a few hundred miles, ICBMs can cross vast oceans. And they can strike right now or very soon the eastern seaboard of the United States, Washington, and very soon after that, everywhere else in the United States, up to LA. And the important point to make is this, Iran's missiles can already reach Israel. 
So those ICBMs that they're building, they're not intended for us. Remember that beer commercial? This Bud's for you? Well, when you see Iran building ICBMs, just remember America. That's God's for you. Now, it's not only that, only the American capital. It's not only that Iran doesn't walk the walk. In the last few weeks, they don't even bother to talk the talk. Iran's leaders say they won't dismantle a single centrifuge. They won't discuss their ballistic missile program. And guess what tune they're singing in Tehran? It's not God bless America. It's death to America. And they chant this as brazenly as ever. Some charm offensive. Iran wants a military nuclear program. I said it here once, I'll say it here again. If it looks like a duck, if it walks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, then what is it? Well, it ain't a chicken, and it's certainly not a dove, it's still a nuclear duck. Well, unfortunately, the leading powers of the world are talking about leaving Iran with the capability to enrich uranium. I hope they don't do that, because that would be a grave error. It would leave Iran as a threshold nuclear power. It would enable Iran to rapidly develop nuclear weapons at a time when the world's attention is focused elsewhere. And we see, as we speak, that that could happen. In one part of the world today, tomorrow in another part, beyond our, our traditional trading partners, countries throughout Asia, Africa, Latin America, where I'll soon be going to, these countries are flocking to Israel. They're not coming to Israel, they're flocking to Israel. They want Israeli technology to help transform their countries as it has ours. And it's, it's not just the small countries that are coming to Israel. It's also the superpowers. You know, the, the other superpowers. Apple, Google, Microsoft, Intel, Facebook, Yahoo. They come because they want to benefit from Israel's unique ingenuity, dynamism and innovation. And I can tell you the BDS boycott movement is not going to stop that any more than the Arab boycott movement could stop Israel from becoming a global technological power. They are going to fail. And in the knowledge-based century, the knowledge-based economy, Israel's best economic days are ahead of it. Mark my words. Now wait, wait. I don't want you to get complacent. Because the fact that they're going to fail doesn't mean that the BDS movement shouldn't be vigorously opposed. They should be opposed because they're bad for peace and because BDS is just plain wrong about anything, about anything, about anything. about anything.